If you'd been savvy enough to buy Microsoft stock back in 1986, you'd be literally laughing all the way to the bank. A humble $1,000 investment would now be worth over $4 million. You don't have to be a stock market whiz to realize that's a pretty sweet deal. Buying shares in other global giants, such as Netflix, Apple, and Tesla 10 or so years ago, something like that, would have netted you a nice profit. Buying stock can go the other way too, however. Seemingly rock-solid stocks in established companies such as Kraft Heinz and Time Warner have plummeted in value, with investors losing small fortunes in the process. Of course, the stock market isn't typically this dramatic. However, it plays a vital part in modern life, affecting everyone around the globe in some way, even non-investors. So how exactly does it work? Well, basically the stock market is the place where stock, where shares of a company can be bought or sold. The stock market is not a physical market, most buying and selling actually takes place online. Companies can raise capital by selling stock to investors who are keen to own a percentage of the company. A stock is simply that, a percentage or partial ownership of a company. Some companies have a small number of shares, while massive corporations such as Apple have billions. The stock market is the system that enables money to move between investors and companies. It's not to be confused with the stock exchange. Stock exchanges are specific marketplaces where stocks are bought and sold. The stock market is basically a collection of stock exchanges. You've probably heard of some of the most well-known stock exchanges, such as the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. Other major exchanges include the Japan Stock Exchange and the Shanghai Stock Exchange. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange is thought to be the world's oldest exchange, set up by the Dutch East India Company in 1602. It's known as Euronext, and is up there with the world's major stock exchanges. Each exchange is carefully managed and regulated to ensure fair trading and transparency. In order for a company to attract investors and sell shares in the stock market, it must first qualify to offer the stock. This is called an initial public offering, or IPO. When a company wants to go public, it has to meet certain guidelines and criteria to do so. There must be proof of a healthy cash flow, strong management, and future growth. This is to ensure transparency and fair trading for investors. An independent government body will evaluate the company's application to go public before giving it the green light to be listed on a stock exchange. In the US, this is the role of the Securities and Exchanges Commission, and other countries such as Japan, China, the UK, and Australia have similar agencies. When a company's IPO is approved, it then has to be listed on the stock exchange of its choice. For example, in America, most companies would opt to either be listed in the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. For the record, NASDAQ stands for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. I know, it's a mouthful. So let's just go with NASDAQ. So let's look at how exactly the stock market works and what are the most important elements. These days, most stock market transactions are done online, as I mentioned, but you can't buy and sell directly in the stock market. You just can't. Once you've decided you want to buy or sell some stocks, you're going to need a brokerage firm to complete that deal. Brokerage firms act as a go-between to connect sellers and buyers. More experienced investors will often use the brokerage firm simply as a means of connecting them to the stock market. Others may choose to use the services of a broker who works for the brokerage firms. For a fee, brokers provide advice and recommendations on what and when to buy and sell. On the whole, most investors buy stocks with a long-term view. They're going to look at companies that interest them and analyze the likelihood of their growth and profitability over the coming years. Traders differ from investors, in that traders are looking for higher risk and higher gain buys and sells, or trades. This happens in a much shorter time frame, hours, minutes, sometimes even seconds. They apply a much more detailed analysis and understanding of stock market fluctuations, and then use this know-how to buy or sell quickly for profit. Many investors will buy stocks as recommended to them by brokers or friends and family, while others will conduct their own careful research to which stocks have the best potential. Stock prices are determined by simply supply and demand. When both the seller and buyer agree on a fair price to mark the transaction, the price sticks. Naturally, the prices fluctuate depending on any number of reasons, ranging from the company performance or issues, the state of the economy, and even natural disasters. When investing, it's common practice for investors to spread their money across a variety of stocks and other investments. This is regarded as the safe way to go, and it's known as diversifying your portfolio. If you invest all your money in stocks for a single company that's booming, but then goes bust, your losses, I need not say, will be heavy. However, if you diversify your investments, there's less of a danger of losing all your money. And 
Investments aren't really just limited to buying stocks, of course. The stock market has a number of options for investors other than stocks. There are funds, or managed funds, where people pool their money together and let an investment company manage the funds. These are popular options for people who are either new to investing or who are happy to entrust a professional to do their investing for them. Bonds are another way to invest money. They're basically loans made by the investor, usually to a government or corporation. The investor will buy a bond, which is a form of lending money to the party involved. The debtor agrees to pay back the loan plus interest by a certain date, and the investor makes their money on the interest payments. Bonds are considered to be one of the lowest risk investments, which also come with relatively low yields on account of that. Commodities are another option for investors. They're essentially raw materials, including agricultural products, metals, and energy. Although commodities can be volatile, many investors like them because they add variety to their portfolios. Commodities are also useful in the case of inflation. When prices rise, commodity prices also tend to rise, making them a tidy little profit. All of these investing options are called securities. A security is what we call any type of investment on the stock market, be it a bond, stock, fund, commodity, or whatever. The performance of stocks or other investment can be seen in a stock market index, which an index basically measures the performance of a specific segment of the stock market. For example, the S&P 500 is a well-known index that measures the performance of the 500 biggest companies on the U.S. stock market. You've probably also heard of the Dow Jones Index, which measures the 30 most traded stocks on the New York Stock Exchange and then the Nasdaq. We see stock exchange index updates on the evening news all the time. These updates will generally say if the stock market is up or down. Up simply means that the stock market traded at a higher price than the previous day. And if more people are buying than selling, share prices are going to increase and the market's going to go up. In contrast, when more people are selling than buying, the stock prices decrease and the market goes down, which makes sense. This is why stock market reports are a daily feature on the news in any country. The stock market has a profound influence on the global economy, and it's the clearest indicator that we have of economic health around the world. A consistently strong performing stock market usually coincides with a healthy global economy. Many people monitor stock market updates, even if they don't have stocks. This is because it can affect their lifestyles. It can affect their jobs. An increase in stock prices for a company means an increase in its revenue, which leads to more jobs and more spending. The opposite is just as true. A fall in company's stock price usually reflects a fall in its performance and the market's faith in it, which in turn can lead to job cuts and a lack of consumer confidence. Investors see their stocks lose value and then they just stop spending as much. That's typically how it goes. When people stop spending, all businesses are affected and the economy risks running into a recession. When asked why take the risk, most investors will respond, why wouldn't I? Investing in the stock market long term is generally seen as an excellent way to build relatively low risk wealth. If investors play the long game, sitting on them stocks and trusting the market, they should expect better returns than if they just kept their money in a bank. The average rate of return on stocks is around 10% annually. Of course, inflation can affect this and some years are going to be better or worse than others. The stock market is much more than a system that enables companies to boost their capital or for investors to make a profit. It influences the health of economies around the world, which means that it's influencing everybody's lives. And while nobody's forcing you to contact a brokerage and start buying, it certainly doesn't hurt to have at least some understanding of how the stock market works, right?